A very warm welcome to all the viewers of Christ University School of Commerce, Finance and Accountancy. I, Dhananjay Kakre, welcome you all to the series of House of Faith. And speaking of chartered accountants, today we have with us CA Narsimhan Ellen Goa. He is an alumni matter of Christ University, BCom Finance and Accountancy, currently partner at Ken & Co. Chartered Accountants. He is a GRC professional and an international speaker at various on various topics like data analytics, cybersecurity, data privacy laws, blockchain, etc. So we welcome you, sir. Uh, before starting with all my formal questions, sir, I'm really uh, honored and delighted to be interviewing you. Since I'm your super, super junior, uh, we often uh, hear about you in our classes by our professors that uh, you are amongst those uh, new batches of our course. So it's really an honor for me to be interviewing you, sir. Pleasure is mine as well. Thank you. Thank you to all, all of you who are uh, viewing this uh, session. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So starting with our first question, sir, uh, while I was reading about you, uh, I was very keen to know that what caught your attention, sir, towards the field of IT audits, data analytics and data privacy? Because now that it's booming, everybody knows uh, uh, about it. And But back in those day, days, it was a very niche field. So what exactly, I want to know, what caught your attention towards this field? So it's actually, it was a coincidence, you know, uh, the moment I cleared my CA, uh, uh, I did a course called as DISA, which is called as, uh, at that point of time, Diploma in Information System Audit. Now they just call it as Information System Audit, which is a course only for chartered accountants, which the ICA brought in. It was the only post-qualification course which ICA had for a significant amount of time. So I say gives one course called CA, which all of us are aware, and they give you a post-qualification course only for chartered accountants. So nobody can directly enroll unless you're a chartered accountant. So I was told and I said, okay, I thought, let me do that. In which case, I've just finished my CA final. And, you know, I would obviously be able to relate the subject very easily. In a year's time, I cleared it. And then I went and met my uh, teacher, uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar Shetty. And I told him, sir, I've uh, completed this. Uh, so what is the next step? He said, very good. Start teaching information technology. So okay. I didn't know whether it was a good or a bad thing, right? Because uh, I was happy that, you know, I'm getting an opportunity to teach and share my thoughts. But then I was thinking, why information technology? I said, I can teach income tax. I can teach costing. I can teach this, that. He said, no, teach information technology. Okay. I said, okay, I took it as a challenge because, you know, students found that at least in the CA course, even now they find it as a dreadful subject because the ask and the want are different. So I said, why not I bridge that gap? And I used to give a lot of practical examples on that. How I used to do practical examples, I used to go read, uh, do a lot of research, how cloud works, how systems work, how analytics work. So a lot of examples. That got my, my, my own mind tricking, saying that, okay, if this is the you know number of opportunities, why cannot I try? It was a very, very patient-driven exercise because it took me five years to get my first client on technology. Right. So the first five years, I was only propagating, speaking on technology without doing even a single bit. And I was able to convince the audience that I had the experience because I had read so much. Right. I had read so much. And it was not uh, just a formal reading, meeting, interacting, various combinations. And then I realized this particular domain has got some interesting scope. And then from there, the first audit came, the second audit came. There was a time where in a, in a year, Maybe one day or two day I was doing information technology audit. Rest of the day was income tax, whatever other work. Today, I it is exactly reverse. Only one day or two day I do in income tax work. And that's normally September 30th or July 31st because of the due dates. Rest all, I've set up a team who takes care of it. And I focus pure play on technology, audit, uh, you know, uh, systems, analytics, and interesting things. So that's, that's where the trigger came. And now I'm seeing the returns. So the first belief which I have to tell you people is if you believe in something, stick on to it, right? And you know that it will succeed. It may take a little time, it'll longer time, but stick on to it. It'll invariably give you results. That is so insightful and interesting to know, sir, how coincidences lead to a, a good results. But uh, being a budding chartered accountant, sir, I would like to ask you, uh, like, is it still a blue ocean or has it turned a red ocean uh, for us? Like see, uh, see what's happening today. Let me tell you on a very pragmatic note and many CAs would not agree with me because, you know, we feel that CA is a domain expertise. Exactly. So all of you, I highly recommend you to read a book called Future of Profession. Okay. Now, the author there brings up a very, very brilliant analogy. He says there are many professions which we believe had a monopoly of the knowledge. An example was medicine. 
we knew at one point of time any issue within our body first we used to go speak to a doctor yes sir. suppose other than you know our parents who used to take care of basic medication right anything relating to taxes it was believed that only if i go to a chartered accountant i will get the answer and which is the truth even today but what has happened in the last 3 to 5 years or 10 years with more and more digital coming everything is getting democratized today i can ask google the question and it gives me a variety of answers today if i ask my own article staff to do a research they go to google only and do it and they give me an answer i said this is not the answer i already know this answer <laughs> yes sir this is not the way of interpretation nobody reads the bare act or the bare section so the way in which technology is evolved i would probably say the relevance of our profession is coming down why because we are no longer a monopoly knowledge is there everywhere right and this is a fundamental factor which we need to remember always today we keep of a concept called startups doing disruption yes. what is disruption if you believe you are in a safe zone forever right invariably you'll walk out you'll fall out of place yes sir so the whole focus is get your fundamental domain knowledge clear you are interested to do ca nothing wrong opportunities are always there the way you practice the way in which you position yourself all of those have to change you clear your ca focus get it done get 2 to 3 years of experience 4 3 to 4 years of experience fantastic start looking into specialization a specialization could be international taxation a specialization could be core direct taxation a specialization could be litigation specialization could be gst specialization could be ifrs and indias right yes, every subject which is there in your syllabus my dear friends is a specialization oh. and beyond that also there are specializations i know some people who just do loan syndication work it is all about working capital management it's all about working capital management ensuring what the bank needs what the customer needs preparing project reports giving that needful information because you ask a customer or a client to prepare a projection he will not understand it exactly so today we are talking about valuation so domains <laughs> are changing so the way i would probably sense is the first level which we need to get is get the ca examination cleared interfinal whatever it is foundation interfinal yes. after that while you are doing this start consciously looking out right consciously looking out for various things which is actually going on in the market whatever you feel of your interest go give it a try okay so that is really a uh, in uh, informative thing like uh, speaking in the same uh, line of information so we see that there is a wave of finance influencers on the social media sites educating us about uh, personal finances trading investing and because of which uh, people are more aware of their financial planning and literacy so now financial profession like financial professional has uh, become an emerging role so as you said now knowledge is available everywhere so we need to groom ourselves we need to to be a cutting edge uh, in this competing market what is your strategy and what how can uh, we stay updated with the current trends okay so the first and basic thing which you should need to be aware is just like how you swipe up and swipe down in your instagram reels yes sir flip that to linkedin okay right follow people who speak on relevant topics it could be technology exactly. it could be finance it could be audit it could be accounting there are so many people who are there right and today you just type linkedin influencers in a particular domain you'll get all these people for example i know a very uh, very nice uh, uh, you know one of those influencers was ca rachana ranade yes sir yeah she is a chartered accountant and she speaks very well on the stock market mm-hmm. right yes. and in fact even me being a chartered accountant i don't know some of those concepts because that was not be my core interest there is mm-hmm. nothing wrong in not knowing it right the fact is how do i get yourself updated but remember in this era of information overload there is so much these influence can, influencers can push to you which may not be right i think yes. you need to take one step back and also analyze from your angle uh very correct sir because now we see even a 12 13 year old child talking about the rebates under 87a and uh, these tax regime forget that the, i i i today morning this morning when i was just you know uh, you know happened to just uh, see somebody status or some update there was a 13 year old child 
who said that he made one lakh fifty thousand profit in options trading. Oh, right. Actually... Now, I mean, there's nothing wrong in it. If you know the game, go ahead and do it. But yes. the question is, what is giving you that satisfaction? Because after a point of time, you'll realize money is not giving you the satisfaction. <laughs> Yes, it is nice for the first two years. You have taken everything. You have gone for an expensive trip. You have a family. You have those things. But then, what is the next thing, right? And that is where you need to have interesting problems to solve. Life is all about having interesting problems to solve. Speaking of so these uh, interesting problems and all, as you earlier mentioned that when you give a task to your articles and all, they just go Google it and up come. So now these days, uh, it is a very sensational topic, and me not talking about it. is a very unfair chat gpt uh, correct sir chat gpt google bard and all these ai softwares sir, are actually uh, do you really think the, these softwares are a boon to finance industry or they are a threat to our finance uh, profession uh, See, as a whole it is a tool at the end of the day yes the knife can be used to chop vegetables it can also used to stab a person agree <laughs> yeah correct it's a tool at the end of the day how you use it depends on your intelligence now you go ahead you college teacher gave you an assignment you type it on chat gpt it will give you the assignment <laughs> answer and response but what did you learn out of it what yes. is the purpose i'm just giving a simple example what is the purpose of an assignment they give you so that somewhere we apply our mind to think something outside the bookish knowledge Exactly. While I agree, compared to what assignments were given ten years back, today assignments itself have matured. Please understand, the person on the other end is also a teacher <laughs> who was once a student like you. Yes. Right. Maybe one, probably a decade back, two decades back, or maybe one, one or two people who have just you know recently become teachers. Now, what are they giving you? They are giving you an assessment based on their practical scenarios. Now, you go ask that to a Chat GPT. Chat GPT gives you answers. What you should do with that is use that. to get much more perspective and focused a discussion earlier when you used to google you used to get about 100 answers you do not know where you have to go probably a chat gpt gives you a specific answer which chat gpt believes to be specific not you ah uh, correct a simple example the first question i typed on chat gpt many you know the 3 weeks or 4 weeks back whenever the buzz was there how to make biryani simple question yes i asked a simple question here yeah? just out of curiosity let's see what it says Yes. It gave me a beautiful response. The next day, I asked the same question. The response is different. Oh, so yeah, sir. Uh, it regenerates. The reason the... is because it is a so artificial intelligence works in the back end based on what is called a predictive modeling. It will use the search words and keywords based upon certain notions, based upon certain data sets which it has. based upon what is being fed to it in fact chat gpt was updated only as of 2000 or 2021 oh. anything in the last one year it was not able to answer of course now the latest version has that so it was down for almost about a week feb 10th or something they again came up with a premium version and lot more things right i'm sorry so they came up with lot more things that day so my statement to you is use ai tools nobody is stopping you but without understanding the fundamental mechanism if you go and believe an ai tool i think it is too early one simple example you are unwell and you type your symptoms to an ai tool it gives you a medicine will you take that medicine tell me obviously the answer is no. no a doctor should still diagnose you it's another matter the doctor might give the same result what an ai tool gives i know various senior doctors today who say absolutely no to teleconsultation why sir unless i see and feel and touch a patient i cannot diagnose what it is because uh, it is not just okay it's okay these are the symptoms this is what is the issue no it is that is not the case if that is the case i can create a programming language for doctors right Thank why you. do i require a doctor because he has the skill set he has this application of mind based on each scenario right so the same way technology will help us tools like this will help us but if you do not have the fundamental domain knowledge you will not sustain for longer um thank you so much sir, for that but uh, as a profession like uh, since it is upgrading itself uh, like the ai is upgrading itself uh, i was uh, very much concerned about certain 
uh, fields like you have a very rich experience in fields like tax consultancy finance consultancy audits and all so do you really think uh, by like using a help of ai uh, will eliminate not exactly eliminate but will replace uh, to a certain extent the profession of c chartered accountants i'll put it up this way yes, have you heard of a vacuum cleaner yes sir what is the purpose of it the dust which is there it helps you to clean yes sir does it save time for you reasonably yes mm. what does a washing machine do the same thing which you were washing literally you put into the machine and you take care of it correct now these jobs whatever i said is it a skill based job no mm. anybody can do it it's a monotonous job it is a job which will give you fatigue after point in time correct those jobs which are very very monotonous is the first level where automation is going to take it now in our own accounting field let's take a simple accounting field what is a monotonous job data entry <laughs> correct right now you pass journal and now you have to prepare a financial statements of a company let's go step by step what is the first thing you do transaction is there yes, you sir. put it in a journal yes, post sir. them into ledger ledger will post it into real balance trial balance will post into balance sheet correct, correct. there is a simple sequence yes. if you are doing in your own classroom 10 entries you read yes pass the journal entries create ledgers prepare trial balance prepare the balance sheet these are the steps you do manually now yes. if it comes to a computerized system what happens you pass those manual entries yes you still have to pass those manual entries yes stop the ledger posting is done automatically by the software mm, correct the trial balance is automatically prepared by the software the financial statements is automatically prepared by software that means what did you do you did only the journal entry so earlier you had 100 journal entries it was easier now you are having 1 crore journal entries is it possible to practically pass entries no, no what will i do automation exactly which means the monotonous job of data entry keying the transaction that is the first thing which will get automated but that is not the end of it i knew a company you know this is personally i visited they have a bpo setup which runs somewhere in uh, tamil nadu okay. i asked them boss what do you guys do they said mm-hmm. we implemented an ocr technology where we scan reports automatically the machine you know will read it mm-hmm. great but when the machine started reading it there are so many errors this human being's job is only to rectify that error okay which earlier i was to sitting and typing i used to see a prescription type it i used to see some diagnosis type it i have to see something and type it today the machine does 50% of the job i am doing the 50% of it. tomorrow machine will do 75% of the job i will do 25% of it tomorrow the machine will do 95% of the job i will do 5% of it that means my mundane task is reducing so if all my skill was just copying and typing pasting i am out of job okay. if my skill was interpreting that particular prescription in the context i will still have a job understood okay. so That's the so as things change your skill set needs to change we need to keep upgrade uh, keep upgrading it is, and it is a never ending process i i firmly believe in the statement learning is a process which starts in the womb and ends only in the tomb <laughs> right yes, tomb sir. means your death bed yeah. right even at the dying stage you get to know oh this is how a person will die you will experience <laughs> yourself so it's a learning at the end of the day yes sir um okay sir these were some of the serious questions uh, taking your interest apart uh, i want to ask sir how does your ideal free day looks like like you are a super busy person sir and you took a time free out free day is mostly with family prior to that it was with friends as simple as that <laughs> okay so and now it's uh, a bit of balance of both friends family <laughs> okay sir understandable and uh, so being a chartered accountant uh, like as a budding chartered accountant uh, uh, so pursuing such a difficult course like ca uh, takes a lot of patience and hard work and obviously mental strength so at one point of time uh, we all seek for some kind of help support and uh, so as you said you uh, i want to know that uh, how supportive your friends and family were when you were uh, studying for chartered accountant and how they helped you shape your career trajectory the way it is see without the support of this set of people nothing in life is possible right okay. family friends i think are the pillars too but yes. the question is 
from a friend circle they should also understand that you are struggling and being persevered yes there is an examination and they call you out for a movie mm. you say no they understand okay but they said what is this boss every time you are calling every time we are calling you know <sighs> you are never turning up there is obviously some sort of a friction which comes up right but you know what your priorities is they may or may not know so having the right friend circle to influence and convince you is very important first and today people understand that's the biggest thing you are facing through some challenge people understand that yes i know you are facing through challenge boss and support you yes. and that sort of a peer influence is definitely there but what unfortunately happens today is we aim for results too early okay. a baby takes 9 months to form it has to take 9 months <laughs> yes right that is the god's gifted process i cannot expect nine mothers to do it in one month no <laughs> no sir right so patience and perseverance are very 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 important because what today we get influenced is okay i am doing my ca course my friend has given up ca he's already got a corporate job he is already you know enjoying his life he's already having this that so our mind started getting very very fickle mind yes and that is where it is very important up to the age of 22 23 even 25 it is okay to experiment of course this i would change in case your family is in need of financial requirements etc those circumstances change but generally in an average middle class family right or an upper middle class up to a age of 25 i think you have time to experiment and get used to it. and we are not an american culture where after 16 you know kids go away or you know parents shoo you away no your parents are still supportive yes. right in fact you will not believe more than you having your exam tension your parents will have double the exam tension exactly and the moment you say see a course they will be you know they will go to the morning temple they will pray <laughs> to all the almighty is in the possible world right so i think family is the very very fulcrum and a very very important pillar right i had those funny experiences where you know uh, you know i used to do this after uh, this is way back right this is at least about uh, i think about a decade or a little more than that so i had this very interesting craze for cartoons and specific for pokemon Oh, okay. The so Pokemon was my stress buster. What I used to do is, I knew this was the time at you know Pokemon used to come, and I even after college I used to watch Pokemon. Right? <laughs> I I really like that. It was yes. a good stress buster. See, there's yes. nothing wrong in doing what you like. Yes. Right. So what I used to do, I used to decide my study plan in such a way. Come what may, at this time I will stop. Okay. So I used to keep a milestone before Pokemon. I need to finish all of this. <laughs> and that okay. sort of motivated others i'll not be able to watch that pokemon series right and this happened even in between the exam days so exam was i think about 2 to 5 come back home 5:30 was a pokemon show you know watch it there was one of those days where i finished the you know exam uh, you know came back home quickly uh, you know refresh and had some snacks and started went to the room and started studying my dad knocked my door and said hey pokemon is coming are you not watching oh. right so <laughs> that's that's the level at which you know sometimes family goes and gives you that because they know that you are going through it i think the family support is very important at the same time some of the families are not aware what a ca course is nothing wrong in it yes. right so they think that okay if i fail right the examination i expect you to clear that's not the case the odds versus the evens are obviously different right so i think yes. it happens with the level of awareness with the family and also bringing them to the context and nothing wrong in taking breaks but very important is to stay away from that mobile phone and you know <laughs> stay very focused today unfortunately our attention span has come down very little. beyond 45 minutes nobody has attention span so i think we are already 30 minutes from our start of the session okay sir uh, now that you spoke okay. about some of your college experiences about pokemon now i'm very keen to know some can you tell us some more experiences from your college days because i remember uh, bhavi sir talking about you uh, your batch had a different time Then us like now we. Oh yeah, so I think your your batch is morning six thirty to six thirty, right? Yes, so our, our, when our batch was there, it was at, I think about five thirty to eight thirty evening. Evening. So our typical schedule was morning wake up, go to CA coaching class okay. between seven to ten or six thirty to nine thirty, whatever is there. Go have quickly breakfast somewhere, run to office because at that when at the time when we were doing it, it was called as a CPT scheme. Today mm-hmm. we have foundation early to CPT, and that time it was three and a half years of articleship, and after CPT you can do your articleship. Yeah. Okay. So you know <laughs> we finished our CPT exam, just knew what is the basics of accounting, but we had to get into offices, start and pick up stuff, 
and until we did our inter coaching we didn't understand most of the stuff stuff which we were doing in office it took us time okay right i understood what is the concept of income tax lab after one and a half year <laughs> okay right so things are different but yes. it happens <clears throat> but then after the so called you know practical experience plus that uh, coaching then we realized what they are teaching is what we are actually seeing in practice yes. and that's when you get that comfort oh yeah this is what it is that's the biggest advantage of this course and then you know things moved on and it was pretty an uh, interesting uh, experience not to forget we still took part in fests we still took part in competitions yes. even though we were evening college we were not given recognition because many of them said, did not know that there was a separate evening college or other thing so we had to oh. fight a little bit fight as in not a little physical fight but <laughs> we had to prove a point yes right and then we have to win our own fair, set of fests and all of those things and we had our own share of masti but the good thing was only 3 hours of college so yeah oh you had only 3 hours of college only 3 right? hours of college of course this thing and only when we had this constitution exams or whatever all those things they they time we had to come oh okay you still have that right constitution and some extra curriculum no sir the curriculum has changed oh it's changed so, okay yeah so it is more towards the yeah ca curriculum and no but we had that one which is the i think across university everybody had to take part in some course some constitution and uh, so is it what is that credit holistic course? holistic learning holistic education oh hcds those yeah, are, yeah, yeah so those sort of things were we had okay so so uh, i have a set of questions to ask but due to time crunch uh, i'll ask you the last two questions uh, first one would be uh, see today everyone is looking forward to cbdc as a future of indian currency and i see you have a very keen interest in this uh, in this field so since it is a very vast topic to discuss uh, can you give us a summary of uh, some see today what has happened in cbdc space which is central bank digital currency for those of you who are not aware of it in a layman's language this started off as a concept uh, with uh, you know abroad where they wanted to say let crypto be there yes a government validated crypto will come into picture which will be settled through a blockchain based system that's the underlying statement but every country decided to adopt it in different fashion in india the way the rbi looked into cbdc was not as a cryptocurrency but as a digital currency okay right <clears throat> currently the mechanism is working on similar lines like a voucher now if i give you a voucher and i say boss you can go to this place and redeem it you will go ahead and redeem it exactly so to that extent they have made this voucher sort of a concept or as, as what is called as e rupee <laughs> the interest of the government is completely eliminate physical cash over a point in time that will happen maybe in a few years you will still have some amount of cash which you cannot avoid but mm-hmm. to a large extent today it is you know eliminated today anywhere we go you we use that you yes, can it is wrong. already eliminated yeah. to such an extent so so the whole purpose of rbi coming to use a cbdc is not what you see in the global context but in the indian context to eliminate the challenges with physical currency and to move into a digital platform where tomorrow if i go to a shopkeeper from my wallet to your wallet the funds will get transferred quite similar to that of a paytm or whatever is going on okay but just that this will not be linked to a bank account okay. it will just be linked to you having your personal wallet and there need not be a bank or a big beneficiary over here the system is still going to evolve it is going to take time as we speak now there are only two use cases where it is being used the government is using it for medical uh, benefits for about uh, you know about 1000 uh, or uh, hospitals they have notified mm-hmm. where you go show that e rupee voucher wallet whatever is there to that extent they'll give you the treatment just like cash it's like you know i gave it just like how you get a 5% cash back voucher and things like that so currently it is linked to a voucher based system okay uh, probably in the next 2 years fintech companies will decide how to use this better and evolution will take but sir if they are not involving banks into it then how are <coughs> in future how are banks going to play a role into this see banks also can have their cbdcs or banks also can have their e rupees okay just like how you have hard cash yes can only bank have hard cash anybody can have hard cash right? yes the same concept is what they're trying to use for an e rupee oh, okay so it will be a standardized for everyone it will be a standardized it will be an apple to apple and it will not be like my voucher is different your voucher is different every voucher will be the same yes. the value will be the same so if i say i have 150 rupee e voucher the value is 150 and it is equivalent to 150 rupees okay right is equivalent to 150 rupees 
So go back to that Monopoly game which we used to play, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Where sir. you had those fancy notes. Imagine yeah. those notes are now getting digitized, and okay. you have like coins into your card, huh. right? And those cards are traded. Oh, okay. Right. So I buy something and I give you those points which is loaded in the card. Okay. Currently, as we speak now, that is what is the use case. I think it will still develop over a point or two. Yes, sir. Um, so, sir, speaking of uh, as a last question, sir, uh, can you say, say, sir, it's a constant debate that uh, in a CA profession, who is more wiser, someone who is practicing as a chartered accountant or a person who is an employee as a chartered accountant? And people say you work for some uh, some few years and then you go into profession. But some people like to stick to the employment. Some people like to practice as a chartered accountant. So, if a person wants to establish themselves in a field of chartered accountancy, uh, what advice would you like to give? Since you are also a partner at Ken and Co. And... So today I'll tell you a very very pragmatic advice. Okay. There are close to about in CA practice. So let's understand practice industry yes. and the big four. Yes. The big four have their own size and scale. So you mm-hmm. join in as um, an article, a consultant, uh, assistant consultant, acon, whatever, all those things. Invariably, you can go up to the level of partner. Yes. And typically, the cycle is at least about 15 years minimum. If you're able to do it in 10 years, that's great. But on average, 15 years. And after that is sustenance and you know how you take care of things. Yes. That's typically the cycle. Some cases, it goes up to 20 years also. When we come into practice <clears throat> or you go into industry, industry is very specific on one domain. So you are looking into IT, you are looking only into IT companies. You are looking into software, you are looking into BPO, you are looking only into that. So it is you are narrowing your opportunity in the very, very initial stage. Okay. And that growth will be focused only on certain things. Yes. But it is a good paymaster. It is a good paymaster. So normally in an industry, they start off with at least about 8 lakhs to 10 lakhs for a fresher. Okay. Right? It's a good paymaster. But then comes a practice. Practice is like throwing a fish net and waiting for it. Okay. Initially, you might get a small fish Mm. or a point of time, you get slightly bigger. Mm. And the longer you are in the stream, the better and the bigger ones you get. And in the longer end, practice turns out to be much, much more beneficial than industry or any of those things, especially if you have an entrepreneurial mindset. Okay. If you feel that, no, sir, I don't want to take any risk. I'm happy. I'm going to do this job. Get everything's done. The choice is yours. But there is another interesting strategy which is coming up. There are various CA firms across India who are sole proprietary or partnership firms mm-hmm. where the partners are aging out. Okay. Right now, this is what is smartness. This is what is strategy. Join those firms. Bring the confidence. Build the confidence. And eventually become a partner there. You have a ready-made practice pool. Yes. You already exactly. got set thing, right? Yes. Obviously, you may not get the entire share of profit. How does it matter? If not, no, in another five years, you will get it. Yes. Right? You become one of the key persons and you can always look upon those people for influence, guidance, thoughts. So today, don't think that, oh, I am the youngster. I will go change the entire world. No. Mm. Without experience, those situations, how to deal with you will not happen. So I know various members, what they've done is they've done the strategy. They go join firms. They say, sir, my intention is to have a long-term practice. And if things are open, right, eventually get into the partner level, right? Not immediately over the cycle, whatever is duly supposed to take. And they'll be more than happy because after a point of time, nobody can keep on working. And today Mm -hmm. the requirements of work is also increasingly changing. So it also gives you a ready-made platform to have clients, Mm -hmm. experience, exposure, Improvise the practice. So okay. many things you can do. <laughs> yes, sir. That is really the options are plenty, but yes. I think first is to get the ma- major milestone cleared and then start looking into this. Yeah, sir. That is really important, and uh, that was really informative. So this is completely a different perspective that we usually get to hear from uh, a normal chartered accountant or something. So, sir, due to time crunches, I really wanted to ask you some few more questions, but. Uh, <laughs> We really would like to thank you for taking time out of your schedule, sir. And it was a wonderful experience interviewing you and act really an honor to be uh, getting to know more about you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for joining. Thank you so much. Wishes to all of you. May you succeed in your corporate career at the earliest. And you, in any which case, have my LinkedIn and other details. You can feel free to be in touch with. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, sir.